John Crowley has led a fascinating and diverse life. Born and raised in Ireland, he spent his teenage years working in his family's pub on the outskirts of Dublin. After earning a computer science degree, he moved to Germany and worked as a Unix systems programmer for Siemens, developing ticketing and reservation systems for airlines, trains, and hotels, which we later found out we had a lot of connections there because I worked for cruise lines. Later, he immigrated to the United States, settling in Petaluma, California, and continued his career by developing systems for the cruise line industry. In 2006, John purchased the coffee shop near his office, a place he had frequented for 15 years while developing software. His vision was to establish a social and cultural hub where people could gather, converse, and connect. By merging the best aspects of his grandfather's pub and Californian coffee shops, John created a unique establishment that serves as a community center or shared living room for local regulars, AKA the Aquas Cafe in Petaluma. Always passionate about community building, John has a particular interest in social capital, which he believes determines a com community's health and happiness. This interest has driven his active involvement in fostering community growth and his theory that providing more opportunities for individuals in a town to interact and connect benefits the entire community and has proven remarkably successful. John's enthusiasm for building social capital combined with his commitment to emergency preparedness and creating healthier, safer, and more livable communities makes him an ideal advocate and co-founder of Pool Petaluma. Thank you so much. And uh, John, please take it away. We're happy to hear from you. Thank you very much, Anastasia. And uh, I'm so delighted to be speaking here at the San Francisco Breakfast Club. It's quite an honor and uh, really appreciate it. So we're going to be talking uh, today about uh, a couple of things. We're going to be talking about uh, pub crawls. We're going to be talking about um, the cafe. We're going to be talking about the power of angel food cake. And then we're going to be talking about a Cool Petaluma, my, uh, my latest endeavor. But I want to start off with uh, social capital and, and what is social capital and how do you create it and what's it good for? And my definition for social capital is that kind of underlying trust level that one has in a community or that feels that kind of sense of belonging, that sense of uh, connectedness that you might have in, in, in where you live. Um, when I first moved to the United States, I uh, moved to Petaluma and um, I, I, I grew up as, as Anastasia mentioned in, in the introduction, I grew up in my grandfather's pub. And anyone who's been to the British Isles knows the whole point of a pub. It's a social gathering space. It's a third space. It's a place where you, where you create community, where it's um, a, a place where uh, people gather, where they get to know each other. And it really truly is a, a, a melting place where all walks of life gather in fun uh, and all it's multi-generational space. And so when in Ireland, when you move community, well, how do you get to know people? Well, you just go down to the local pub and you'll meet just about anybody there. Um, so I kind of thought, well, why don't I do the same when I, you know, I landed up in Petaluma? And it, it wasn't quite the same sense. Um, there was a, there was a, 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 just the different kind of idea of what the whole point of a bar was versus restaurant versus the, the English Irish pub that I was so used to. So um, one of the things that I, I started uh, as I, when, I, when I moved to Petaluma was a thing called the Petaluma Pub Crawl. And I know you remember that, you, 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 I'm sure you were on it a couple of times. Um, the point of this really was to create connection. It was instead, because there wasn't that my, my Irish pub in Petaluma, I, well, I created a moving pub. And I'll tell you a little bit about this. It was an event that I ran probably for about 10 years uh, that happened probably about four or five times a year, not super frequently. But it was, uh, it, so I'd send out an itinerary and it was kind of the beginning of the internet. And I'd send out an itinerary every two months or so. Uh, next, or uh, you know, two Saturdays from now, we'd have a, a, the Petaluma pub crawl. And I'd list a set of, um, of places that we would visit. And we'd spend an hour and we'd go, to, we'd try to find very unusual places. We'd go to a, I remember once we went to a, a welding plant, we went to a furniture factory, we went to, you know, and then of course we'd go to the, the some restaurants and, and, and bars as well. 
But the, the whole point of this thing was to create, it wasn't about drinking, although a glass of wine or two obviously helps, uh, helps the conversation flow. But uh, we had themes. Now, the themes varied. Sometimes it was bring a photograph of yourself as a teenager or bring a postcard that you got. But my favorite theme, and, and it was a recurring theme, uh, was bring a book that changed your life. And so you walk into an establishment of the book underneath your arm and uh, you, immediately you kind of you're part of the, the event. And um, if, if I tell you about the book that changed my life, and we'll, we'll talk about that book uh, later on. Um, but if I tell you about the book that changed my life, you will soon you'll, you'll you pr pretty quickly know whether you want to have another conversation with me. Um, and, and, you know, the, the regularity of meeting people created a sense of, of togetherness and created a sense of sense of community. People started getting to know each other and started to remember, oh, yeah, you're the you're the person who, who uh, you know, read, read that book and had their life changed by that certain that, that book. And it created a, 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 a wonderful sense of community, especially for people. So I came in, as I said, from, um, from Germany, um, landed in, in Petaluma, beautiful community. Um, but it was kind of hard for me to kind of, well, how do you, how do you make friends? And it was, a, it was something that troubled me and kind of led me down this path of, of creating social capital. Most of the friends, and I generalize here, most of the friends that we make are, you know, through our through our kids, through our, our place of worship, or through our work. And uh, you know, I arrived in the United States with with um, um, with no kids, didn't go to church, and I worked with two other computer programmers. So it was, you know, you can see my 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 dilemma. Uh, and, and so, hence, I, I created this this very successful pub crawl. And um, it, it really was something that helped people integrate into a community and integrating into a community. And, and you probably all I'm not sure whether you've, you've, you've all um, grew up and, and live where you where you where you grew up. But it, it is a problem that is um, ubiquitous. Kind of, We all move in, in the United States quite frequently. And the, the, the question of, well, how do you create and how do you create friends? Um, it's basically through places like the San Francisco Breakfast Club. That's how you make friends. It's it's a it's a third space, and the concept of a third space is very very important to uh, excuse me <coughs> to our lives. Um, that pub that I that I, I grew up in, every every community in Ireland has got two centers uh, of community. One is the church, and the other is the pub. <coughs> excuse me. And um, these 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 uh, centers are extremely important to the very basic kind of sense of, of social capital that a, that a community has. Um, and so um, these 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 pub calls helped people create relationships, help people create um, conversations, and through those conversations, I remember overhearing one uh, there was two guys chatting. And they were looking at each other and they were saying, you know, you look kind of vaguely familiar. And the other guy was saying, yes, you look familiar. Oh, we're neighbors. And it, it was it was quite amazing. And it was kind of it, it, it dawned on me then that that we really do need this kind of an uh, kind of a space or, or, or a, some kind of a mechanism that, you know, uh, other than the traditional ones for creating those those connections. Um, Soon after that, it was uh, actually it was probably about uh, early. It was two thousand and six that that coffee shop that I had been going to, which is the it was the actually the uh, Petaluma Coffee and Tea Company. You see, I'm drinking a cup of coffee out, and and some people say, you know, oh, you're drinking from a cup of coffee from your your competitor. Absolutely not. They're co-creators of social spaces, and that's really what was 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 uh, important to me that. Uh, we're all in this together. The more coffee shops, the more uh, people who understand this concept of third space, the, the better we are in society. Um, excuse me, just um, so the 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 coffee shop that I created, it was very much a, a, a combination of the Irish pub that I grew up in and California coffee shops. Uh, intentionally so some you know the, the the Irish pub Irish English pub can be a little alcohol centric and it uh, was important to me 
in Aquas Cafe that everybody would feel comfortable there. Teetotalers, um, you know, that, that alcohol was not a, a, a central point of it. The central point of the cafe is to serve as a third space, a place where people get to know each other. And it's actually quite, um, quite uh, uh, um, evident from people in the coffee shop, <clears throat> in the cafe, that you can quite happily have a conversation with people next door to you. If you think of a, a, a restaurant, a restaurant, you go in, you eat, you're not, you know, it'd be a bit strange if you had started a conversation with the people next door to you, but that's exactly what happens in Aquas Cafe. Um, we've designed it, for example, we've put some thought into uh, around the, the, the outside wall of the cafe is just one big long bench. So, and then there's tables up beside it. If you're sitting on that bench, you're sharing something with the people next door to you, you're sharing that bench. Uh, and it gives you uh, an opportunity to start a conversation with that person. So the whole point of these, this, this, the work that I've been doing from the pub crawls to the last pub crawl, by the way, we, we was probably about 10 or 15 years ago. Um, we had about 400 people on it. And that's kind of when I realized, okay, I, there was, it was just got too big. Uh, and it was also about the time that I was opening Aquas Cafe. So that energy that we are creating, that, that, that social capital, um, it had a home in Aquas Cafe. Um, so what is what 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 kind of things happen at the cafe? And so there's there's, there's two the two uh, just to, to to back up a little bit. There's Aquas Cafe, which is a regular for profit business, and there's Aquas Community Foundation, which is a five hundred one c three. The purpose of that organization is is to build social capital, to create um, connections between people. And how do we do that? We do that through uh, various different ways. Uh, last month, we had an event called Drinks with Shrinks, uh, whereby we get all the, the therapists in Petaluma, you know, psychotherapists, coaches, um, uh, it, that, that genre of, of people who typically have a relationship, one-on-one -on -one relationship with their clients and not necessarily know people kind of uh, horizontal uh, to themselves in, in, their, in their field. So we gather everybody together uh, in, in the cafe and we do some intentional speed networking. So I'll get, I'll get on the microphone and say, <clears throat> okay, everybody gather into groups of three people and uh, you know, two, two, two of whom you do not know. And you've got a minute and 30 seconds to tell the other two people about who you are. And that takes uh, four and a half minutes. And, and uh, um, so every four and a half minutes or five minutes, um, I'll, I'll ask the people to find two new people. And we'll do that for probably about half an hour. And by the end of that, you've had a conversation with 16 different new people. And that, that again, it's, it's creating a, a sense of community that you've had a quick conversation with somebody. Well, uh, again, similar to that, 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 uh, that book, you'll know whether you want to have another conversation, whether that person was, was uh, uh, of interest to you or, or not. Um, the, the month before that, we had um, a film and video mixer where you gather everybody in, in Petaluma who is in that business. You do the same kind of thing. Next month, we're going to be doing um, everybody in the nonprofit world. So the, the underlying uh, idea between um, the, the cause for, for Aquas Community Foundation and for Aquas Cafe is creating that, those, those connections so that people uh, develop a sense of place and a sense of belonging um, of, of, of being in Petaluma. So what do we do with all this social capital? Um, well, about a year ago, um, a, this idea of a, this cool city uh, challenge came, came across my desk. And this was a, it was a challenge grab that went out to about 40 cities in, the, in, in California. And it was a typical, it, so it, first of all, it was a, um, a, a climate um, organization, climate change organization. Um, and, and so this grant went out to about 40 cities. And it's a typical grant application with lots of lots of forms to fill out and lots of detail. But the interesting and unusual part about this is you had to get four or sorry, 200 members of your community to put their hand up and say, yes, I'm going to be a block leader. 
And of course, Petaluma having the social capital that it does, we not only had 200 members, we had 312 people put their hand up and say, yes, I want to be part of this organization and do something. It, we were just coming out of COVID and people were, were, were yearning for the sense of connectivity. We we're also yearning for a direction of how do we do something for our planet? And, uh, and also how do we, how do we pr prepare for, we live in Sonoma County and we have had fires, by de devastating fires. And how do we prepare for that? Um, God forbid we have an earthquake, but that's probably inevitable. Um, so let's, let's uh, prepare for that emergency. So um, there were three cities that actually won this. Uh, it was Petaluma, uh, LA and uh, Irvine. And that gave us the, 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 uh, the, the seed money to start this organization called Cool Petaluma. And so Cool Petaluma, again, so what is this, this, this idea of Cool Petaluma? Um, we know we need to do something for our planet. It's, it's pretty evident now that uh, there, there aren't very many uh, climate change deniers out there um, with tornadoes in, in, in uh, the, the uh, southern United States and in, in a time where uh, and, 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 uh, and a place where tornadoes have never happened before. Things are changing. They're, they're, cha they're changing rapidly. So it's really important for us to, to do something. Um, so let, so I'm going to uh, back up just a little bit to another uh, really nice story that plays into why I chose to uh, to take on Cool Petaluma as a, a project of, of Aquas Community. I moved into a little street um, in Petaluma about 30 years ago. We were there for about 10 days and we got a knock on the door and my neighbor from two or three doors down the road, Helen. Um, she had, she was, this was 1993. So she was 92 at the time. She was born in uh, Ohio in 1901. And she had been through the, the depressions. She'd seen the Dust Bowl, uh, had been hungry with her, with her children and knew the power of community. And so when we opened the door, she stood there she brought an angel food cake and gave it to us and said, welcome to the neighborhood. And that, that single act of kindness transformed the way I felt, not just about Petaluma, but about America. And I kind of thought, well, gosh, this is just wonderful. Um, so actually, ever since then, I've, I've made it a point to wherever I've lived, and it, it's the entire time, and obviously in Petaluma, to have gone across the road whenever any somebody new has moved into my street and gone over and introduced myself. I, I'm, I'm not a good cook, but I do make jam. And if I have, have a pot of my jam, I'll, I'll introduce myself with a pot of jam and say, welcome to the neighborhood. And it, it, it has a couple of interesting elements to it. You know, nothing might come of it um, or a, a friendship might come of it. But the one thing that it does do is it puts you in control of your first interaction with your neighbor. Some cases, your first interaction with your neighbor might be when my dog bites your cat or the, the, the tree falls on your fence or your car or something like that that might not be as pleasant as, as uh, when, it is, when it's in your control. <clears throat> so um, that's that kind of idea of, of, of creating that relationship we all, I know I remember um, as, a, as a young child, my mother sending me across the road to Mrs. O'Shea's, uh, she was baking and she didn't have any eggs and or didn't have enough eggs. And I was sent across the road to Mrs. O'Shea's and, can, you know, can we borrow two eggs? And of course we can borrow two eggs. Um, and we kind of think about that, that sense of community, that sense of, of uh, place, and we yearn for it. And we also kind of think about, well, God, you know, what would happen if one of my neighbors came knocking on the door and asked for a pint of milk or, or a couple of eggs? Of course you would give it to them. And you'd actually, not only would you give it to them, but you'd actually feel um, honored that they would trust you to come over and ask for two eggs. Now, the thing is that if we turn that on its head, we don't actually go and do that. But this, this, this Cool Petaluma program does exactly that. It, it gently um, offers uh, an opportunity for us to 
uh, interact with our neighbors and, and, and create that sense of space. So let's talk about uh, Cool Petaluma, what is it? Um, we know our planet's in need. How, what, are we, what are we supposed to do? We're all kind of individually um, recycling things. You know, I mean, is that the best we can do? Um, I, I hope not, and I know that is not the best that we can do. We are doing a lot more. Cool Petaluma is an organization that is striving to bring people together in, in action and also in, in creating community around getting prepared and doing something for our planet. <clears throat> so I remember the, I mentioned that these, these 200 or 312 people that put their hand up to be uh, block leaders. What is a block leader? Block leader is somebody who takes um, themselves and their five or 10 nearest neighbors through these series of gatherings or parties in either in my, so I, I'll talk about my, my block. Um, either, so I, I hosted these parties either in my my backyard or it was kind of, it was towards the end of, end of COVID. So it, we, we had them always outside um, or in, in a neighbor's uh, backyard. And the idea is to um, the series of, of uh, five or six uh, gatherings or parties are designed not only just to create community, but each of them have a focus on them. So the first one is emergency preparedness. Second one is understanding power, energy. Uh, how do we heat our, heat our home? So it's, it's talking about electricity. We know that we need to get rid of gas. Gas is natural gas. The other term for natural gas is methane. Um, I always kind of, I always kind of, uh, I just have to scratch my head when people say, oh, it's natural gas. Well, in natural gas does kill us. And it is definitely not good for the planet. Um, the, the, the third meeting is about water uh, and, and how do we um, um, preserve our, and, and not waste our water. So all of these five meetings have a different a focus of, of, of that it has some environmental impact on our planet. Now, throughout this series of, of meetings and, and parties, um, social capital is built. So the people, that, when they've gone through this program, yes, they've got their to-go bags ready and they've got their, uh, they've gotten their solar and they know their evac zone and they've shared all their, their um, emergency contact information with everybody. But at the end of the day, it's really the connections that have been made that is of true value. It's always, you know, I always kind of say it's it's much better to to in in case of an emergency, it's much better to get to know your neighbor before the emergency than after the emergency. So these 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 um, these these gatherings, you know, you'll find out well who's who's the who's got the uh, emergency generator, who's the, uh, the 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 guy who understands construction in case uh, of, of of earthquake. Who is the, the nurse or doctor that can help you with a broken arm in case of, 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 uh, of emergency or, or earthquake, those kinds of things. Um, so so it's, it's kind of one of the, the stories that I hear uh, that really kind of warms me is, is this, this uh, the guy who, who uh, lived on this particular street and he spent probably about 25 years waving to he knew his first name he lived about four doors down the road his name was frank but that's all they knew about him and through this this uh cool petaluma program they have become best friends they've understood that they were hey i never knew you were interested in woodwork or you know whatever it is it's woodwork it's it's speaking french it's whatever it is that that creates that connection without that initial conversation you have no idea uh the 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 underlying kind of social cohesion and social connection that, that can happen underneath that. So it's a program that is uh, wildly successful. We've had, um, we've up until now we've, we've trained. Um, so my job uh, as, a, as a program director is to help these block leaders go through this program. <clears throat> now it's the first thing you gotta do is go and you knock on all your doors of your five or 10 years neighbors. And that can be actually quite a scary thing to do. I mean, generally, who knocks on our on our doors is is uh, some of you might remember the the encyclopedia salespeople, um, or now it's in this day and age it's solar solar. People don't generally knock on our doors um, with a kind of like, "Hi, come over to my 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 house. We're going to have a neighborhood gathering. 
and we're going to talk about emergency preparedness and and how to help each other and how to build community. So part of my job is to to you know help these people do that, and and we have training sessions once a month to we we launch uh, cohorts of of, uh, of volunteers, these volunteer block leaders, uh, in groups of of about uh, twenty people. So far, we've trained uh, nearly 200 people to go through this program. Um, and we have reached over close to about a, so, you know, each of these, these block leaders then will, will have five or 10 um, of their neighbors go through this program. And we've had probably about nearly a thousand uh, households go through this program. We've, we have, you know, calculated that we've saved um, quite a few thousand uh, uh tons of, of carbon dioxide going into the into the planet and it's something that we need to do we need to do this now we cannot wait for a program that is some somewhere in the future that is going to you know uh, save our save our planet and save our um, uh, carbon footprint we really need to do this now um and so with that i i'm going to come to a close in a second or two but one of the things that that I kind of want to go back to is that idea of social capital, and in in, in our um, our one of our missions for um, Aquas Community is gathering people, and it's something that I this kind of little quote that I that I wrote myself uh, uh, maybe about ten or fifteen years ago really kind of embodies the work that that I've been doing here in Petaluma. If we do not meet, how do we get to know each other? If we don't get to know each other, how can we trust each other? And if we don't trust each other, how can we learn to love? Thank you. Beautiful, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, John. That was, I learned so much. I learned so much. <laughs> So let's let's first start with President Tony. If you would like to come in, if you have any comments or questions, and if anyone has any questions, you could drop it in the chat, or ideally just raise your hand um, underneath the reactions at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, there's a raise hand fit function. Click on that, then uh, we'll we'll go through these one by one. Hey, great, John. Thank you very much. It's uh, great to have you this morning, and I love the uh, work that you're doing out there. Uh, my official title at my job that I work at is community manager. Since 2015, I've been helping build community within organizations and uh, following the community management um, and not, not like apartment communities, but doing what you're doing. Uh, and I think you're doing a wonderful job. It sounds like Golden Gate Breakfast Club is, you know, a club, a community in itself. We're all about relationships. And, you know, do you have some we're wanting to continue to grow our club both locally and we are now an international club, uh, have members from the UK, Turks and Caicos, et cetera, and all over the country. But uh, how would you recommend us to, uh, you know, one of the top one or two ideas to help our club grow? What would you recommend for us to do in that well, in that realm? So one of the things that we're doing with Cool Pet Luba is we are creating a template to be used by other communities. We're part of a, a, a larger, larger organization called, uh, which we're all par creating in parallel called Cool Communities. And what we're doing is we're, we're, we're developing this program uh, for communities to use. Um, you know, a, a large part of that is, is the website, it's resources, it's uh, training. Um, so that's absolutely one of the things that I, I definitely do. Um, the the you know that's that's on the the environmental part of things. Uh, true community or uh, social capital building, uh, as I mentioned, those those speed networking events are hugely valuable to any community. Um, you know, I, I, I get stories um, maybe sometimes years later. Of yes, now we 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 developed this um, uh, feature length film or this documentary because of that meeting that we had six or seven years ago, uh, that got the right people together in the room that happened to maybe live in the same town. They didn't even know they lived in the same town, and now they meet in Aquas Cafe or they bump into each other on the street or the or Petaluma Market. Um, those kinds of things are are, are super important to uh, uh, you know to, to just 
create a, a way to people for people to connect with each other in any way you can. Okay, cool. Thank you. Next. Uh, Stasia, you're muted. Yes, Fripp, go ahead. Well, one, thank you for your presentation. I cannot wait to get back to Pat Petaluma. It's been a little while. I notice on your website you have music. So tell us about what acts you have and when you have them, please. So the uh, the cafe uh, pre-COVID, and we're, we are getting back to, or we should have said we haven't quite gotten back to our, our pre, uh, pre-COVID level of entertainment, but we used to have entertainment six nights a week um, um and and that ranged from from um bluegrass to irish sessions to rock bands to um whatever it is kind of music very very varied music monday tuesday nights we we leave for the spoken word so we we have we actually had poetry that, this last monday um we had science lectures we have civic engagement evenings we have um you know, anything, again, that, that gathers people together. Um, I have not been rushing back to uh, to, to, to re reinstate the music, um, mainly because I, what I want to focus on, music is great for gathering people together, but it doesn't start conversations. Um, so, as I mentioned, you know, we're, we're, I've been focusing on these mixers, getting people uh, together to, um, to, uh, to, to just start a conversation and start a relationship. So, but we'll, we'll get back. I mean, I miss the music. It's a lot of fun and uh, it, it we'll get it back. Beautiful, thank you. I miss it too. Yeah. <laughs> I just miss being in Petaluma. Um, okay, Craig, you have a question. Um, John, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, fascinating information. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to visit your, your cafe too. I'm, I'm over in Marinwood, so I'm not too far from you. Okay. Um, all right, so Aquas, uh, you know, I, I didn't catch it if you earlier if you'd explained the name, but can you tell us how you came about that that interesting name? I look at the so it, it's a name that uh, we that I invented basically. Um, when you know when you create a create a, a name for something, it does come with some kind of a baggage or some pre pre uh, preconceived idea. Uh, so it was important to me to create a new word. And so I always kind of say we're putting meaning into the word. Um, and for me, it is that 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 uh, connection between people that uh, that sense of sense of belonging, that sense of place, that sense of uh, community that uh, that that's that, that's what it means for me. And that's what it means for for all the, all of my customers and anybody who's who's associated with Aquas. They understand what it's about and they they know that they're they are creating meaning for the word. All right, thank you. And Susan? Um, I love this because you're speaking to the person who wrote about savvy networking, et cetera. But what, how I heard it was that it needs to be really scaled. So, and to use that business term, I, I know you're doing things you just explained to, through the cool communities, but is there a way, maybe a couple of questions, is there a way to get some kind of funding, uh, maybe not out of Silicon Valley Bank, but to get some investors like, we really need this because uh, our current Surgeon General, Dr. Murtha, when he wrote his book together, discovered the number one epidemic was loneliness. Yeah. So when you have two people who live four houses from each other who never talked. I mean, I created a party here for everyone in my building. Mm -hmm. So I know how valuable it was for all of them to talk to each other, including the kids, but I'd like to see that scaled. And, and I will say this, net, uh, next door, which I wrote about, it started with that premise, next door has devolved into something that has been horrendous and and I see what you're doing is something that comes from such goodness. You, you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, it does need to be scaled um, through through uh, cool communities. Um, so so 
through, I mean, I, I would, I kind of thought maybe I wanted to create a uh, a chain of of Aquas cafes, um, and it was difficult for me to kind of think about well, how do you create a chain of community builders? Um, it's not impossible, but I'm still I'm still focused on on Petaluma, um, having the project. Uh, cool communities and cool Petaluma is an excellent way to do that. And that's what I would recommend anybody to do that. You know, I, I've kind of thought, and it will happen sometime in the future, that most cities or all, all progressive cities or, 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 or uh, cities who are, um, will have a director of social capital, a department of social capital, to look at how, what what is the the, the social capital in your community? Are there people who are lonely out there? Are there people who are, you know, when you build something, what is the impact of that building on the surrounding, not just, um, you know, an environmental impact on, on the, the, uh, the environment, but a social impact? What is the impact that people, that, that building or that uh, whatever it is, has on the community, the, the, sense, of, the sense of place? So, uh, Susan, I totally do agree with you. Yes, we do need this. Um, I'm focused right now on building the the uh, making sure that the cool cool Petaluma is successful. Um, once that is in place, and it is pretty much in place, and we are moving towards, we're having conversations with folks in Healdsburg and also in Sebastopol. Uh, they're seeing the successes that we're having here. Um, and they want to want a part of that, and we've already developed so much that they were, you know, we're going to um, hopefully help them uh, just launch up in, in their their cities. So it is it is happening, um, it, 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 and you know, suddenly in in, in leaps and bounds. Um, uh, it's never it's never fast enough, but um, uh, let's have a chat. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. So, Richard, were you just clapping or were you trying to do the hand raising? Did you have a question for John? Yes, I do. John, how do you keep politics out of it? Does politics get involved? Um, politics doesn't really get involved. Um, I, you know, it was, it, no, it, it does not. Um, you know, th th that sense of belonging, that sense of place, I don't quite. No, it doesn't get involved. Everybody understands the the value of of social capital, and one of the things that that, that social capital it translates uh, nearly. I mean, you can't say dollar for dollar, but it translates into real capital. If social capital is defined as kind of that that sense of trust, but it's also your civic engagement. How civically engaged is your community? Are they part of Local government are they? Do they join PTAs? Are they? You know, are there are there things happening? Do do people get a sense of community there? Once people have that, and there, there's always places with the low social capital where people don't trust each other, where there's bars on the window, where nobody talks to each other, where your your initial reaction to somebody is a feeling of distrust. Here in Petaluma, we have a very high social capital. You meet somebody new. Your automatic reaction is yes, of course I'm going to trust this person. Why wouldn't I? They, they, they live in Petaluma. Um, they understand that, that 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 what we have here is is a is a is a deep sense of trust and sense of community. Uh, that's why everybody wants to move to Petaluma. That's why nobody can afford a house here. You know? <laughs> but it, it it truly is that 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 sense of uh, of community that it translates absolutely into it's you know if you're if you're a business person you're you know we're looking for a place to to open up a a, a a business you wouldn't you want to choose a place that where everybody wants to live that's petaluma that's why people are moving to petaluma in 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 droves um and people who not just people who who but people who understand and want a sense of community um, and I think that's pretty much everybody. <laughs> so um, politics, I, I mean, I know, I know everybody on the city council. Um, I'm, I'm involved, although I'm not on any uh, commission or, or, or committee. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of it, and I'm at city council. I was at city council two days ago, um, and and will always promote and help people get on uh, boards or whatever it is they need. Uh, or, or, or uh, certainly, um, you know, promote that. So, you know, I've I've had no no trouble with uh, politicians. 
Thank you. I don't think that's, I think it means the fact that our politics have been divided. But when I wrote Secrets of Savvy Networking, there was a wonderful line from Evita, politics is the art of the possible. And as a former teacher, I wrote, politics is not a dirty word. I learned plenty of them from my students. Not one of them was politics. <laughs> but you are, you're making the discourse happen. And I can't help but think so many people are not affiliated religion-wise, but to be affiliated with your community gives people a place to belong. Yes, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually speak to that as saying that it's partially why we start off with the emergency preparedness. Uh, that, you know, regardless of, of your politics, we have to be prepared for emergencies and we have to help each other. And that crosses all boundaries. And there aren't, I mean, right now, I mean, that's why, you know, our, our, our second meeting is about power. It doesn't matter what politics you are, you need to have power. Is it solar power or whatever? Yes, we want it to be solar power. We all realize, regardless of our political affiliation, that we need to get rid of gas. We need to get rid of methane, that kind of thing. So uh, we, we, uh, we, we do, uh, we, we, we cross all, all political uh, spectrums. Awesome, thank you. And Doug, you have your hand up. Thank you, John, for the program. Uh, when I was in college, you reminded me of, oh, about 69 or 70, the Reverend Malcolm Boyd came by, and he said that with so many people who appear to be lonely, it's inexcusably selfish to be lonely alone. Oh. And that has stuck with me all these years. So you're right in that alley. He, yeah. also, went, he also went to bars a lot because that's where his people were. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally understand that. Uh, it really is important, and and that that uh, that that sense of belonging. You know, one of my nursing friends uh, told me ten years ago that uh, she prescribed Aquas Cafe rather than Zoloft to um, two of her, her patients because if you have if you if you have a sense of place, you have a you know. I, I go into the cafe and I'm I'm going there in about half an hour. I'll I'll, I'll go there and you know it'll be nine thirty. It will be loud with conversation. All the seats I was there yesterday. There wasn't a single seat available. Um, people were waiting, waiting for 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 people. And you know, and that's kind of what you know. People will start sharing tables. Uh, it is that kind of sense of a uh, nice sense of community. That yes, of course, um, you'll share a table and you'll have a conversation. But it is having that sense of, of a place where you belong. It's your it's a shared living room. It's that that shared, um, you know, I look at it as my living room, but I also look at it as my 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 uh, customers living rooms and they treat it like that. It's their their space as well. Awesome. Thank you. And Fripp, you have a question. Uh, yes, I have a question. As meeting manager, I wish to acknowledge that our new member, Betty Rhodes, is here, and Hugh Tuck and Carl Walsh did come in after our introductions, but we're glad they're with us. And my question of John, well, what are what is the cost of houses? <laughs> was saying, it's getting to the point people can't afford to move there. It's, oh gosh, our average house, oh, it's probably a million bucks. Easy, yeah. <clears throat> Expensive, but you get what you pay for. And you get a sense of community, you really do get it. You get a beautiful downtown, you get uh, great restaurants, great, great, great uh, uh, downtown, great sense of community, uh, great entertainment, um, great live music, um, and uh, just generally a, a really nice place to live. All right. Uh, how about uh, let's see? I think Bert came on before Bill. I, or I, yeah. Let's just go ahead with Bert if you can unmute. Yeah, I, I just want to mention um, in the in the late nineties, about ninety seven, um, my boys had had uh, graduated from high school, and so we took a trip around Ireland, um, uh, to ferry from Swansea over and, and rode around the south and west coast of Ireland. And um, we uh, they weren't they weren't 21, but, but but we but we went to pubs every day, morning and night. And some of what you're talking about, I got the feeling of in all the Irish you know villages and towns and stuff like that. Uh, it was uh, and and bicycling around. 
everybody was just so friendly. I couldn't, you know, there was just none of none of the automobiles and, you know, mm -hmm. trying to run you over because with the hedgerows, they had to follow us sometimes for miles, you know, and it's <laughs> a wonderful time. And, it, and, I, and I said, gee, I wish I could export this to the uh, United States because <laughs> you could see the communities did much of what you're talking about in there. Um, I live in San Francisco and I live in something that ex an area that's extremely rare. It's a cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. Francisco, but it's been around. It, it, it's 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 been here since the late 1930s, and so we have multiple generations, you know, who are here, and, and we pretty much all know each other. Uh, we have they call them block parties, but and and a lot of those are just instantaneous. Nice, and and we nice. share. Uh, and, and there's a lot of cooperation. Uh, that I don't think that there's much in the way of political disagreements, but uh, but we're we're and we're in the stage that you're talking about, where where we're in the stage of of, of electrifying our homes, going to net zero, getting the the PG&E right. pull that that out of there. And I think it's partly because of, because we are so centered together. Uh, that, that, that we can actually work that way. And we're moving into the next phase where I'm trying to work with the city of San Francisco to, to be able to come to these kinds of blocks <clears throat> and present how San Francisco is going to get away from PG&E and, and, to, and to electrify. So we're, it's working well. And everything you said, I've agreed with. I think it's, it's you're really on, on the right track. So that's really great. Thanks. Thank you, Bart. Yeah, it reminds me of the, this kind of idea of and it, it, it's um, it's a little Western or American, I'm not sure, but this this idea that we all have to be independent. Um, we really should not listen to those people who tell us we need to be into we need to be interdependent. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it sounds as though you live in a wonderful, wonderful cul-de-sac and, and, and uh, kudos to you for for keeping that sense of community going. Um, and you know, helping people go solar, and, and uh, it's, it sounds like a nice, well, nice cul-de-sac. I love my neighbors. They're they're yeah. just wonderful people and very generous. And yes, yeah, yeah great, great. Beautiful. Thank you, Bert question. and Bill. You had a question. Good morning, John. Bill Buchanan. We live. My wife and I have lived down here in Bill Valley for I don't know, going on fifty years, like that, but. It's a smaller community, so the opportunities to to have these kinds of gatherings that you're talking about and organizations exist uh, more frequently than the larger uh, communities. Uh, so I really uh, uh, appreciate your initiative here. I think it's a good frame of mind to be in. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think the stronger uh, attractions to bring community together uh, since we've been here have been negative. <laughs> Back 23 years ago, we had a bunch of coyotes who said, you know, we're going to take over the elementary school campus and we're going to go around and scare everybody and attack smaller dogs, small dogs, stuff like that. So we had a community come together and say, especially the parents, you know, anyway, stuff like that. And of course, the wildfire problem brought us all together. We have a little community uh, organizations to try to deal with that, reducing risk, trying to get home insurance, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, you know, and there are many other positive things going on, obviously. Um, but um, anyway, uh, and by the way, uh, one of the uh, things we look to forward to every year is gathering a bunch of Marine, marine and active duty veterans up at the Jacuzzi Winery for in November for the celebration of the Marine Corps birthday. We have a big ball up there. It's a big blowout. It's a beautiful place. It's a nice opportunity to get away from, you know, the more dense, intensive surroundings, you know, we sometimes have. Um, but as you were talking, uh, I, I, I went through my mind that um, both um, my wife has uh, on both sides of her, you know, relatives, one is um, derives from Alsace-Lorraine in, you know, France. You're, Germany or France, take your pick. It depends on what, yeah, goes back and forth. <laughs> so either it's big German or French. Uh, and uh, and the um, so uh, so um, and the other she has Crowleys on her side. Oh. So that must mean there's somebody up there, and you know, County Cork, 
Yep. <laughs> Exactly. And so I've told her one of these days I'm going to take her out there and we're going to go visit both venues and see if we can identify and contact wealthy relatives who will write us into their wills. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we don't have the money to go over it. But um, so I'm thinking uh, my side is comes from the Loch Lomond area, Western uh, Scotland. Uh, the name Buchanan derives from the religious term both Canaan, seat of cannon ship, uh -huh. around on the west, you know, west coast of, of Scotland. So that's where that comes from. So one of the days we'll go over there and check that out. But my question is this: um, You seem to be very happy in the United States of America, but Ireland is a great place to live too. How can you compare the two? And I don't expect you to go through all different levels, you know, social, political, blah, blah, blah. But how can you compare uh, the two countries in terms of your perspective being that you are American citizen, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. How do you compare the two? You, you were born and raised in Ireland. So how, how, what do you think about the U.S.? <laughs> Um, well, so back when, I, so I, I just turned 60 this year. So um, when I left Ireland, which was 1985, straight after college, uh, that's kind of typically what, what many generations of Irish did. They, they grew up, they got educated and they left. Um, and that's, that's what I did. Um, I, I, you know, had, having stud, studied computer science, I didn't really have to leave. Uh, many people did have to leave in order to find jobs and, and a better way of life and a better standard of living. Um, there are, you know, if, if I compare America to, to Ireland, there's, there's many pluses and minuses. Uh, that sense of community in, in Ireland is probably unparalleled. Um, uh, and, and America has got many advantages to it. You know, it's, it's, it's 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 beauty. It's it's a uh, um, sense of the the can do spirit that is in America. The entrepreneurial kind of spirit is very very strong in America. I, I really enjoy that. Some of the things that I've done, um, you know, in America might not have been as easy had I been living in Ireland. You know, um, business wise, it's 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 a lot easier. Um, but there's certain parts of of of, of Ireland that uh, and that, that kind of sense, you know, back to the sense of community, it, it's so valuable. Um, you know, we can't, we, we're kind of, I think we're, I think society is on a, a, a turning point at the moment from looking at success, not in material or, or um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, not in material terms, but in, in happiness terms. Uh, what is your sense of community? What is your sense of are you are you are you are you happy? Are you surrounded by people that uh, that you love and and, and love you and, and focusing less on on the material wealth? Uh, I know certainly in Ireland, um, material wealth is is it's it's there, but it's it's not a focus at all. It's it's really who you are. In your heart, and and whether you're a funny storyteller, or you know whether you can sing, or whether you can you know the life and soul of the party, that's so much more valuable than you know driving a Mercedes or whatever. Um, so uh, you know, I love both countries. Obviously, I became a United States citizen. Um, uh, Petaluma is now my home. I do go back to Ireland uh, once a year. My mom's still with us, and I have siblings there too. Love every minute of being that being there. Um, there was there was a moment actually last year. Um, uh, I, I'm entering down in the, into the political realm at the moment uh, when I did seriously think maybe I I should go back to Ireland. It was about the time when the Supreme Court came out with decisions, which reminded me of the Ireland that I left in 1985 when uh, contraception was still illegal. Uh, there was strangely enough, there was a uh, <laughs> um, there was a black market in condoms in Ireland in 1985. Uh, you could not walk into a store and, and buy contraceptives. And um, the, the Supreme Court decision and Clarence Thomas's um, is, is missive uh, taking me back to that. I kind of thought um, America's going in, in, in the wrong direction. Ireland is now one of the most progressive countries in the world. 
Um, I kind of thought, yeah, maybe it's time to go back, but I, I, I think we dodged a bullet and I think we're going to be fine. So <laughs> I hope we are. So. Thank you, Thank John. You.